And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast, man. We're starting a little bit earlier than usual, man. We got a lot to talk about, guys. We're going to teach you how to prepare for the job interview to get that job. Let's get into Let's it. Let's go. Are back. We're back. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast, man. It is Monday, aka Money Monday, man. We got an important episode for you guys. We're going to talk about how to prepare for that job interview. We're coming up with 10 ways to step by step ensure that you get the job, set yourself up for success. This is major, um, man. I yeah. mean, nowadays people apply for jobs, they don't know the resume, a CV, they just kind of wing it or use chat GPT with no type of context. So, we got you guys today, man, for sure. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, too, guys, is... Well, actually, let me make the announcements real quick before we get into the preamble here. Um, Rumble. Rumble.com slash FreshFit, guys. Check us out over there. Also, CastleClub.tv, as you guys know. That's where you can get all the behind-the-scenes content. And we also upload all of our content to Castle Club, man. So when we live stream, it's all there. So if something does happen, you can always find the content over there on CastleClub.tv. Um, and then also Rumble.com slash Fresh and Fit. I even posted my uh, Columbia, some of it, on uh, oh, nice. Fresh Club, yeah. Nice. It was crazy. Nice. So, back in uh, one piece. Yeah, back in one piece from uh, from there with the, with the uh, network. Yes, sir. Um, what else? Um, Bill's Mo, y'all got anything? Yo, it's Monday, bro. Not uh, early. Well, yeah, you we got, out here early. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, we out here early, but uh, glad to be with you guys. Uh, uh, so you guys can follow me at Big Mo underscore B-I-T-W. That is B-I-G. M O underscore B I T W. Don't forget the memo to believe in Big Mo because that is the M O. Bills? Hey, what's going on, y'all? We are here uh, a little early, but happy Money Mondays. You guys can follow me on Instagram at J Bills, J B I L Z. Yeah. So, prior right. shows, people asked us about getting jobs, you know, do resumes. And we planned to do this a while back, but today we, got, we came with the info today. And obviously, speaking, guys, we're going to see real time Myron's physical resume. Good examples, bad examples, but more importantly, we're going to break down how to do the resume from A to Z. So Yeah, um, and the other thing, too, I want to make sure, sorry, guys, I'm like adjusting the, the camera slider, right? We got to keep, we got to flex a little bit here and make sure <laughs> people know that we got, uh, you know, we got some some good equipment here. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. God but, I mean, honestly, guys, most people nowadays, though, okay. they don't how, know how to do a resume, and as a result, they wing it, like I said earlier. But the biggest thing is understanding your employer doesn't know you as yet. So this is going to kind of negate with to get that recognition right off the bat. Yeah, and so. here's the other thing, too. You guys are asking, yo, what, what, probably, yo, how did you guys come about this, whatever? <laughs> Rewind. So about three weeks ago, I, I want to say, almost a month ago, one of the, someone called in and said, hey, man, y'all should do an episode on, you know, how to um, write up a resume and be prepared for a job interview, whatever. And in my head, I was like, wait, hold on a second. This is actually is good. a very good idea because let's keep it a 1,000, you know, and I want to have this very tough talk with you guys before we get into this. Not all of you are cut out to be entrepreneurs. Most of you are going to have to get a job and or work for someone for a period of time. Even if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're going to need to learn how to work under somebody to some degree. This whole idea of I'm going to become a 20-year-old millionaire entrepreneur, that's far and few between. A lot of times the people that teach you this stuff on courses and tell you be rich in your 20s, blah, 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 it's all fucking cap. You're going to have to start and get a real job and understand and learn some real skills and more than likely use that if you want to build up a business later on. This whole thing of becoming a millionaire in your 20s, guys, that's less than 1% of the population. You got a better chance of making a goddamn MBA. So the reality is you need to know how to do this. This is a skill set that you need to know. And there's nothing wrong with working with somebody, right? I think, and I've been super honest about this with y'all, we have way too much entrepreneur porn on the internet, whether it's on YouTube, uh, Instagram, etc. They got everybody working on a laptop from fucking the Bahamas, to, you know, trying to tell you, this is my laptop lifestyle, blah, 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 blah. You know what yeah. I mean? And they're making it seem like being an entrepreneur and traveling is like so cool and everything else like that. What they don't show you is the hours of toil, the the, the hard work, um, working all the time. Everything you do revolves around the business. You know what I mean? Um, 
I think how it literally takes your life over. Like they don't show you all that. They yeah. show you the the, the 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 highlight reels, but they don't show you all, all the struggle it takes to even be able to get one of those highlight reels. I think personally, if you want to master a business, start from the bottom up. Learn from the very bottom as an employee. Learn how things work, maneuvering, for example, the equipment, the staff, how your boss operates, what he does for a living uh, behind the scenes. And okay, cool. You know what? I can do this as well. And then from there, you know, to run that business. We're not going to, we, you know, we tell you guys all the time, you know, entrepreneurship is great, yeah. but we're not delusional as well. I'm going to tell you that all of you can be entrepreneurs and, you know, all of you guys are going to become millionaires, whatever. Like, we have to be practical here and tell you that a lot of you guys are going to have to get a high income skill, get a job, make money, and then you could choose if you want to go ahead. I mean, and, we had jobs too. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple Nothing jobs, wrong with by the way. A job, bro. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that shit. And, and honestly, you're, you're better off, like, guys. A lot of you guys say, yo, Myron, you know, you're an inspiration to me. I learned a lot from you, whatever, blah, blah. Bro, the reason you guys have my, the Myron games that you guys have now is because I worked fucking jobs. <laughs> like, I had real jobs, real experience. That's why I don't respect a lot of these YouTubers because a lot of them never had a real job. They never understood chain of command. They never understood, like, really getting it out the fucking mud. They just decided to turn on a fucking camera and stream themselves playing video games, and they were able to become successful and make money doing that, which is great to them, but they don't have any real-world experience. So. Yeah. For the rest of you guys that live in the real world, I think this is applicable knowledge that you guys can go ahead and take with you that will serve you throughout um, the rest of your life. But the reality is not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. Don't fall for the entrepreneur, entrepreneur porn all over the internet. And there's nothing wrong with being an employee. The goal isn't to become an entrepreneur, guys. The goal is to become financially free. If that means that you get a high-income skill that allows you to get a high-paying job, you can save that money and still buy your freedom through real estate, investing, etc. It might take you a little bit longer. It might not be the most traditional way to go about it. But there's plenty of doctors, lawyers, etc. that are real estate investors that have money on the side because they learned a high-income skill, which allowed them to diversify and save that money and then invest it. And then they were able to choose to work when they want to work. Yeah. I, you know how many doctors I've seen, especially the guys that are making uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, where they only work one day a week and they're doing it just because they enjoy it, they want to keep their practice up, their but passion. they already have a bunch of investments set up, whatever. So they're basically choosing how much they want to work. And that's where I want you guys to be. Not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a job. Yeah, 100%. We we'll have some chats here and then we'll yeah. get, get chats into it. Chats and then we'll go ahead and uh, hit, hit the stuff with y'all. Um, let's see here. Uh, one, huh? One, it goes, um, five bucks, appreciate that. Um, and then we got, and th this is probably going to be one of the most important episodes we've we've done, by the way, for you guys. Yeah, for a while. Uh, one, one says, nigga, bring your hair doctor on. I think I'm going to Turkey. <laughs> so he says to bring your hair doctor on for a podcast, pretty much. Um, Gabbadi says, haters and three or fours would say no, one would watch if it was for, for the girls. Yeah, man, we add more value than just girls, man. We have also as well Money Mondays and as well. Especially guys on the show. None too. of our competitors can do this. And like At I all. said before, a lot of these episodes are not as profitable, but we do them anyway because it's that important for you guys. So for anybody out there trying to say, you guys are in it for the money too. Absolutely we are. We never denied that. However, it is not the linchpin that decides if we're gonna do something or not. Because I'll tell you all this if we just wanted to make money, we would not do daytime shows whatsoever. We would just do after hours and we'd be chilling, hanging out, and promoting and gambling and alcohol for We'd have huge sponsors, man. That too. So so um so, you know, people trying to sit there and compare ourselves to them and like, you guys do it for the money, too. We are not the same, my friend, at all. We actually add value back that puts us at a uh, in the red, but that's okay. We don't mind because that's how important this shit is. Okay, Fresh the Pug. Funny, bro. Yo, Myron, is it you operating the Twitter? Because I see an account with your name interacting with the copycat Big Feet Woman, and there's <sighs> a British guy, TikTok something, hitting on you. Don't have on on the show. Is the IRL with the fake Tricon today? <laughs> Yes, that is Myron on Twitter, by that the way. That is Myron on Twitter, that man. Uh, you guys unleashed this beast, man. I mean, hopefully this doesn't turn into something bad, but um, he's on Twitter. I think it's Unplug, is it Unplug Fit X? Unplug Fit X. There you go. Unplug Fit, Fit X. X. Yes. That is Myron tweeting to you directly. Wait, they don't think it's me? Yeah, they think it's somebody yeah, else. It, it was, I, so, didn't, I didn't believe so it was. So apparently, I didn't believe it was, didn't me, believe it was you the first time. <laughs> yeah, he says uh, someone's uh, interacting with the copycat Big Feet Woman. I don't uh, know. Remember the remember oh. the one I met at the CME? Oh, Oyster? oh, oh Oyster? yeah, yeah. I mean, bro, yeah. I don't have a problem with her, guys. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't hate her. Like, I just, like I said, like I don't have a, I don't hate her. Um, so, like I said, it's just not. Yeah. Okay, uh, Austin C. Thanks for all the encouragement, guys. Interview coming up for a position as a power lineman. Time to double my income. Good stuff. Sell your video games and get up at three a.m., motherfuckers. That's facts, bro. Nice. Haitian Jack, yo boy speaking facts. I've been an HVAC tech making 100k a year on the verge of getting my contractor's license. Blue collar guts is where it's at. That's facts, man. Um, people sleep on that as well. 
and then uh, some Rumble Rats here, and we'll get into the topic. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for this episode. Do you recommend that we use LinkedIn? I have a LinkedIn account, but I never use it as there's too much ass kissing going on in that platform. I never use LinkedIn, man, but I understand it's that for some. It's better to have it than not have yeah, it at all. It's better, yeah. Like, just have that lease. Um, Geo vlogs it. What's up, what's up, y'all boys? No, y'all doing on this fine Money Monday. C Bum won, won, like I said in the last show. show. If you guys have him on, bro, that would be a fire show. W first, W Mind, W Big Mo, Chris Ass. <laughs> Demons absolutely did that shit, but he innocent. Free my boy Melly. Yeah, that's NSA. Oh, wow. Uh, Heaven, if y'all should have David B. Colum on your podcast, he does podcasts regularly and talks about uh, a lot of geopolitics and the financial system. Very high IQ conversation. Hmm. I don't know who that is, but okay. Uh, shout out to you guys Been watching for three years Got my CDL last year Just landed a job Making 150k Keep it up fellas You are changing lives out here We got you my friend Shout out to you bro Alright So Alright guys So we're gonna go ahead And go over <laughs> 10 things that you need To have in place Right Before you go And do your job interview Or during a job interview Okay So number one guys Okay And yeah and this, um, Guys from this point forward Rumble Rants are gonna be 5 and up And then the um, Actually no We'll go 10 and up on on everything, ten and up on yep. everything, guys. Uh, because we're we're a little bit shorter for time today. Yeah, you, guys like, you guys like that background right there, man? That's it's clean, great. bro. Uh, okay. So number one, guys, wear a suit and be clean shaven and or minimize facial hair, neat hair, and conceal any tattoos. Huge. So, unfortunately, this is you know, step one, guys. Our race of uh, people sometimes like to have t- bro. dreads and. A lot of hair, because it's a time to grow. But most employers, Braids, man, shit like that. are not into the Afro culture like like you think they are. The urban look, and as a result, your clean shaven look, or at least structured and lined up look, goes way further than the natural flow of things. So, number one, guys, presentation is key at interviews. And I, I'll never forget this, man. I went to an interview. You guys saw it actually on the internet. Grant Cardone. I took. Most of my hair off, clean shaven, showed up, presentable. Especially for sales. Now, I didn't get the job, but I came ready for the position. And most of you guys out there, don't take care of yourself hygiene-wise. And looks-wise, man, look at you. They say, you know what? Can I see you in my office? I can't. And as a result, they say, you know what, bro? You may be qualified. You may have experience, but you don't want the part. So on some level, guys, understand the interview process is also on paper, but also on looks. And if you don't take care of yourself, why would they hire you anyway? So, 100%. Yeah. Um, the reality, guys, is image matters, okay? You need to go in there with a goddamn suit. You need to go in there, business, wear the tie, etc. Even if it's overkill, wear a suit. It shows that you're serious. It shows that you respect the position. It shows that you respect the interviewer's time. Um, you know, and it shows that you're just an individual where you got your stuff together. Um, we used to call it in the government, he's a squared away individual. That's what you want to be. You want to be that guy where you take shit seriously, you show up. And you mean business. And a suit says that in a very uh, profound way. And people forget posture as well. Guys, firm handshake, smile. Don't be weird because they're looking at you and everything that you do. Also, so remember, guys, in an interview process, they want to make sure that you're actually able to do the job that you apply for. And you're not weirdo. So office politics goes a long way. And for the most, most part, people that come into job interviews are not ready for people's skills at all. They just say, you know what? I have some experience or I have like a degree, I should get the job off default. But guys, posture is very important, man. I can't tell you this enough because a lot of people neglect that part. And again, this is a key here you can use for yourself as an, as an employee trying to get a job with an employer. Look at their mission statement for the company. What do they want in their employees? Uh, employees? They want to have people that, for example, focus on customer service, focus on tech. Look at their mission statement on the website, study it. So when you go to interview, you can come prepared and say, hey, I saw on your website you're looking for dedicated folks, individuals in this sector of like finance or tech. They're gonna say, "Wow, he did some research. He saw what we're about, and he came with value to add to the company." That's well, huge. that segues into number two. It's huge. So the first thing, guys, is wear a suit. Obviously, clean shaven. Minimize facial hair. Neat hair. And then uh, conceal your tattoos. And I'll, I'll be honest with y'all, like I said, with, like Fresh said before, you guys can call us racist, whatever the fuck you want. But they are going to judge you if you go in there with dreadlocks and braids, especially depending on the position that you're interviewing for. Okay? And it sucks, but it's reality, It's man. the reality, bro. Yeah. The people are going to judge a book by its cover. The next thing is absolutely research the company and the position that you're applying for. Yes. Like, you need to know the mission statement. You need to know their... Um, their uh, you know, their rules, their values, etc. You need to know all these things. 
um, so that you understand. So if they do mention certain things, you know uh, what to say. Um, you know how to respond to certain things. If they try to quiz you, you'll know what they do. Yeah. You need to know all these things to research the company. It's amazing to me how people go to a job interview and they won't even research the company and or the position that they're applying for because they've applied to a million jobs and they're just like, you know what, whatever job takes me, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is if you don't research the job, they don't think that you're going to take the job seriously, so they're not going to hire you. So you need to research the job and research the company. Guys, I spent a month at Pimmer Pines, every day at Starbucks, studying positions, companies, and trying to get a job, right, for a month straight. So my resume itself was tailored towards a certain uh, avenue of tech. But again, I had to learn from, learn from experience. But all from guys, I realized, with, uh, especially with interviews, people want to know that you're doing research on a company. So here's the cheat code you can use as well. Glassdoor. So a lot of employees, right, complain on Glassdoor about companies, uh, maybe how they run their staff. Maybe for example, tell the people what Glassdoor is. So basically it's a review type Website where you can post about company, the good and the bad. Uh, but of course, people will post mainly the bad. But with the bad as well, you can learn from that as well. So I would just say a tip is go to Glassdoor, the company, see how they treat their employees and what they're about, and take from that to kind of like, I want to say, counteract any issues. Because what employers do is they go to Glassdoor and say, okay, this is a common issue with our company that employees have. Let's see if this person going to fall into that category of like this bad behavior. If you can kind of like cover that, re that rejection up front, you win. Because again, they want to see if you're going to follow that path with these bad employees that kind of talked about them on, on the website. So I will say cheat code is class as well. You can use to kind of have knowledge of what the staff is about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So so the first thing, again, wear a suit, clean shaven, minimize any type of facial hair, guys. Obviously, come clean. You got braids or some stupid ass hairstyle. Get rid of that shit, man. It is. What, sorry, guys. You, this is the professional world now. Okay. Um, and then we talked about researching the company, knowing the position. Third. Bring a copy of your resume, guys. In Preferably two copies. One for the interviewer, one for yourself. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, because the reality is, guys, when you go to these companies and they're bigger, whatever it may be, the person that's interviewing you, a lot of the times, might not necessarily been the individual that first saw your resume and picked you to be interviewed. Yeah. Does that make sense? Especially if you're dealing with a big company. That's all huge. this stuff is compartmentalized. So the person that picked you off of your resume is a lot of the times not going to be the same individual that interviews you. So bring your resume, right? Uh, and we're going to talk about, you know, memorizing and everything else like that beforehand. But bring your resume and bring one to two copies extra with you to give to the people that are interviewing you so that they can go ahead and go through it quickly and see, kind of get a, a snapshot of who they have across the, um, the table from them because they might not necessarily have it. And then one more thing about Glassdoor, guys, people will post their experience in interviews as well. Some of them will. And that's kind of like a introduction to what you might be get, getting into off rip. So it's, that's another cheat code there as well. But this is out to your point regarding the actual like our resume. Having a copy for yourself shows you're one prepared. And so you can actually re reference what you're talking about in real time. So that's actually huge as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, always bring a copy of your resume, guys, just so, you know, and who knows? You might get interviewed by two to three people. So bring extra copies, one for yourself for sure, and then at least at least bring two copies, okay? I can say a little shout-out without, guys. I've applied for many jobs uh, online, but every time I got an interview in person, I, I always got it because I came prepared. One, mm -hmm. I came with two resumes as well, and I knew the company mission statement, and I knew what, what they're looking for from their employees. And, guys, please be presentable. Don't fold it up and put it in your fucking pocket. Yeah. Bring the resume in, like, in a, a folder. folder or something like yeah, that. folder. Or, like, some kind of, you know, nice little thing, right? Like, maybe a little notebook or something like that. Like, put it in there. If you can, you're really fancy, use professional paper. Don't use computer grade paper. Like bring it like in a in a, the paper that's like a little bit has more density to it. Mm -hmm. And again, bring a few copies. You know, have it um in the in the thing. Obviously, you're coming in with your suit. You got the the resume there. You're gonna be looking like a million bucks. You're gonna be prepared. Uh, when you sit down, obviously you introduce yourself. Blah blah. blah. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. But you hand them a copy, and then you have a copy as well, yeah. just in case. Okay. Be professional, man. Like this is. Remember, guys, you want the job. You're competing with other individuals. It's your job to distinguish yourself from all the other morons. And this is their first time meeting you for the first time. I mean, obviously speaking, they want to have a good impression. And it starts with looks, of course, then the resume as well in your hand. Yes. Um, also, another one. Uh, guys, arrive at your interview 20 to 30 minutes before you need to, before Sheesh. the interview. Okay? Huge. Let me. That's huge, by the way. Get this into your fucking brains. If you get there late or just on time, that's not a good look. Get there 20 to 30 minutes before your interview, 
okay? And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, you might not necessarily be familiar with where the hell it's at. You might not know where the interview is going to be. I gives yourself a little bit more wiggle room, right? Or where, where, uh, how it's set up, whatever, right? Maybe you got to get through security, get through the building, all these things. Also, you're probably going to have to check in with somebody beforehand. You want to be able to go ahead and get there early, and they're going to remember that, oh, this guy came in like early. And you best believe that the interviewer is going to speak to the person that you check in with, okay? Be polite to every single fucking person that you see there. Okay? Yep. I don't care if it's a janitor. You need to be applied to everybody because you don't know who the boss talks to. Okay? And more than likely, everybody that's involved in the interview process, whether it's the person that seats you, maybe the receptionist that takes your name in, maybe the person that signs you in, whatever the fuck, everyone there more than likely is going to speak to the person that's interviewing you, and he's probably going to ask, what was his temperance? What was he like? Oh, yeah, he showed up really early, blah, blah, Like, all these things add up, guys. And what you're trying to do is, with your presentation, coming in well-groomed, well-spoken, uh, dress well, coming in with extra copies of the resume, right? Uh, in a nice, neat folder, right? Uh, it's a nice and it's a good paper. It shows that you mean fucking business, and you're a squared away individual. Mike brought up a very good point. Coming early prepares you in the interim. So let me explain. If you come early, right? You can meet people by the counter, maybe their um, front desk, the janitor, maybe some of the people in HR. But here's a secret: learn their names. I'll tell you why. When you get that, that interview process, right, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I came pretty early here, and I met Janet at the front desk, really awesome person. I'm just curious, like, um, what's Janet's, like, um, you know, position or whatever? Basically, you want to create small talk with the employees because it's kind of like you get to know them on a first-name basis, and then, wow, this person came early, and they know our staff already. So just having that interaction with the clients right away, sorry, the um, employees, knowing them on a first-name basis is huge as well. Yeah, Goes a long and, way. and being polite too, because yeah. what the thing is is this: a lot of people are polite out of necessity and not because they 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 um they want to be. You need to learn how to just be polite in general, and this is a skill set that you need to learn before you even get into the professional world. Like you need to treat everyone with respect, guys. I'm yeah. talking about the guy that serves your food, your waiter, waitress, whatever it may be. Like you should be polite to everyone that you deal with because you don't know who knows what or who the hell is who. So especially when you walk into that setting, you go in a building. You need to treat everyone with respect because you best believe the person that interviews you more than likely is going to ask questions about your temperance and how you behaved, et cetera. And trust me, they will talk behind, behind your back. They'll Absolutely. say, okay, this person came in 20 minutes late. Uh, they were not hygienic. They were really like off-center. They were not really focused, and yeah, they're not a good employee to hire. First is you come early, you know everyone's name. You're nice, you're courteous, you're humble. You know what? He's a good, he's a good guy. Let's look into this further. Maybe hire him for long term. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, when you go in, right? Uh, when you so when you go in and you uh, take a seat, right? Make sure you shake the person's hand firmly. No fucking weird handshakes like this or anything like that. Nice firm handshake, guys. Okay. Um, look them in the eye. Obviously, you're standing. You're not sitting down or whatever. Like, let's say they seat you down and then the interviewer comes in, right? After the fact, you stand your ass up and you shake their hand and you look them in the eye. You don't sit there. Oh no. You stand up, look them in the eye, shake their hand, and then you sit. And then you say, hey, nice to meet you. My name is XYZ, blah, blah, blah. Nice to meet you, blah, 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 right? And, um, and then, boom, you get, you get started with the interview, right? And uh, when you introduce yourself, guys, you know, obviously they use the, something called the seat method, which actually this is – I was taught this um, in college when I, when, when I was um, there, which is basically you want to quickly summarize yourself with your skills, your experience, education, achievements, and type of person that you are, okay? So, for example, I can say for me – my name is Myron Gaines, you know, former special agent with Homeland Security Investigations. I did that for um, the better part of a decade. Um, my edu I, I have a bachelor's degree from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, during my experience as a, as a special agent, I investigated several high-level uh, crimes uh, at the federal and state level. Um, and, you know, I'm a very tenacious person that goes after what I want and um, very motivated, self-driven and uh, I will not take no for an answer. Something like that, right? That's yeah. kind of cheesy. But you guys get the idea. The point is, that what did I do in that little introduction? I gave my skills, my experience, my education, my achievements, and the type of person that I am, right? And I summarized it all within the introduction. That's very important, guys. It is. And guys, nowadays, for most people, ever since uh, COVID happened, you do Zoom interviews, right? And people often forget eye contact is very important. Eye contact. Why is that? People get a job interview, look to the left, look to the right. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm good at these skills, whatever. But what's eye contact? You're not confident. You're like, yo, this guy's kind of awkward. It's not gonna work out. So very important, guys. When you're in an interview, a person or on Zoom, eye contact is key, hundred percent. 
also, you need to speak from what I call the active voice and not the passive voice. Don't use terms like, I think. No, it's, this is what, like, oh, I know X, Y, Z, I've done this, etc. It's not, I think, or I, th or I hope, or I wish. None of that bullshit. It's active voice. You speak in the affirmative all the time. You got to speak confidently about yourself. They did a study. The more confident you are in interviews, the more you get paid. If you're, like, lackadaisical, you're more chill, uh, I think this is this. And, like, you know what? If we hire him, we could train him, but he's not really that experienced. Versus you have experience and you're confident, oh, he's this guy. Yeah. He can give us these results. We'll pay him more money. Yeah. Off rip. But to be clear, that's not to be cocky either, guys. Yeah. Okay? There's a very clear balance between coming in confident. She belongs to the street. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> coming in confidently, <laughs> right? And knowing your worth versus coming in cocky and thinking you deserve the job. And you run shit. Yeah. And you run shit. Yeah. Right? You need to go in there where you're dressed well and you take the job the job process seriously, but at the same time, you're letting them know, I take this shit seriously, and trust me, other people want to hire me. You need to come in with that type of thing. Not obviously saying it, but you need to be squared away where the employer is interviewing you saying, okay, this guy has his shit together. Mm -hmm. This guy's squared away. He showed up early. He's dressed well. He's got a shirt and tie on. He's um, overdressed for the situation. When in doubt, over fucking dress. Okay, fitted suits, motherfuckers. I don't want none of you guys wearing these goddamn suits that are all baggy, looking like crap, etc. Also, I'll be honest with y'all. If you're fat and you look like shit, that's gonna hurt you. That's gonna hurt you, Good. guys. You know, you're not only is your is your suit gonna look like a goddamn picnic table and not be fitted to you and stuff like that. It says a lot about your personality. Okay, it shows that you lack discipline. It shows that you lack consistency. It shows that you don't have. Um, the ability to stick to things long term. So being fat is unacceptable as well. And there's no excuse, guys. If you want a suit, there's Zara, there's H&M. I mean, you can get a tailor as well, but yeah. honestly, that should be fine for you. You're better off getting a tailored cheap suit than getting an expensive untailored suit. One more time for you. You are better off getting a cheap suit that's well tailored than buying a very nice suit that isn't tailored. You understand? Okay, guys? So make sure, obviously, brown belt, brown shoes. Black belt, black shoes. Go conservative colors. Navy blue, black. Okay? Can you do gray every now and then, potentially? Yeah. Just don't be too ostentatious with the colors, with the color, with the shirt underneath, etc. But to be safe, especially if you're going to do a conservative job, right? Like a law enforcement, you know, something like that. Uh, you want to wear black or blue. I remember I wore a gray suit one time. But, uh, you know, I, I put, wore it a certain way, mm. right? So just know what you're apply, what, um, what type of job field you're going into. But black and blue, you're not going to go wrong. Yeah, a nice I, Navy suit will never fail you. I thought about wearing black, then it, they might not see me in an interview, so I wore blue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? Bro, bro. Blue and gray, bro. bro. <laughs> like, they can't see me for all black, man. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> now, uh... So, okay, guys, always, <laughs> right? So during the interview, right, they're going to be asking you questions, right? Always match up your strengths with the duties of the job, right? So, for example, um, let's say you're doing a job where it's a lot of um, self-management, right? You don't have a lot of oversight. You know, you got to be able to think uh, outside the box and you got to be able to make things happen um, without getting your hand held and not being micromanaged, right? Mm -hmm. This is like uh, when, for my job when I was a special agent. Like it's a very self-managerial type job. You get a lot of freedom. You can come and go as you please. You don't clock in. You got a take-home car. All this shit. But with that said, with freedom comes what responsibility, responsibility. and authority. So you need to be able to um, illustrate that not only can you you know thrive with freedom, but on top of that, you have the skill set to think outside the box. So. Uh, like, let's say the job I'm applying for, you know, it requires a lot of, you know, outside the box thinking, innovative thinking, you know, being able to make shit happen um, on the fly. I would give an example at my last job, right? I'm doing an operation. We're going to do a drug buy or whatever. And the informant is running late, right? But we got to tell the bad guys that we're going to make something happen. Well, I can send an undercover in and he delays time, right? Mm. I was able to make a split second decision, make something happen. And then the informer showed up later and we were able to, you know, continue the operation, whatever. That's just giving you guys an example. What the point is I'm trying to say here is if the job requires, you know, critical thinking skills or being able to make things happen on the spot or being able to um, think outside the box, you want to make sure that your strengths and your experiences align with whatever they're looking for. And you need to have a good story that you can use to illustrate that, right, to give some social proof. And how do you know what they want? Mission statement. Glassdoor examples. Do your research. Research. You'll find this out. Beforehand. That's how you know. Yep.
So, man, yo, goddamn, like the video. <laughs> We're giving you a lot of sauce right yeah, now, man. Here, man. I, I wonder if any of the other, you know, copycats or haters or anything else like that, are they giving this kind of value? No, nope. no man. I mean, honestly, a lot of them speaking, never bro. even had a real job before. Exactly. Nope. And if they did, it's a McDonald's. It's some bullshit. Target. Some bullshit. Just no. saying, but it's fine. All okay, right. so uh, I think one. we're midway through here. Yeah. So, um, quick little recap for you guys that are just joining us. Um, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> wear number one, guys. Wear a suit, be clean shaven, minimize well, minimize or and or minimize fa facial hair, neat hair, uh, neat hair, and then conceal any tattoos. Research the company and her position. Make sure you know what you're doing and what you're going getting yourself into. Bring a copy of your resume for yourself and for the interviewee. Show up 20 to 30 minutes early. Um, uh, be polite to everyone there at the at the location. Always match up your strengths, uh, especially that are on your resume, with what the job duties require. Okay, so that it's a perfect. It seems like it's a perfect fit. Uh, and then when you introduce yourself, use the seat method. Introduce yourself. My name is X Y Z. Mention your skills, your experience, your education, achievements, and the type of person that you are, which I gave you guys an example before, right? Um, now, next, okay? This question almost always comes up on job interviews. Hmm. What's your biggest weakness, right? How you answer this is, is you're going to do something called a humble brag, okay? Something that you could say is, I find it hard to not take on extra work, or, or sorry, I find it hard to, to say no, and not take on uh, extra duties and help others when I might be bogged down with my own responsibilities. Or I'm a perfectionist. Or I, um, I'm obsessive about getting things done in a certain way. You know what I use? I say, even though life is hard, work is my priority. And that's my weakness. Yep. I, priori I mean, I priority over everything else. Yep. Work. Yep. And it's like, okay, he's dedicated. He's focused. He's going to be here in the long haul. And here's the other thing, too. Interviewers aren't stupid. Mm -hmm. They know that you're probably going to say that. So you better have a fucking story to back up that goddamn yep. claim, motherfuckers. Yep. That you is should. key. <laughs> Don't fucking sit there as a lazy piece of shit and say, oh, yeah, uh, my biggest weakness is, um, you know, I can't say no to people. I got to just help them out all the time, blah, blah, blah. Oh, can you give us an example of that at your last job? And then y'all niggas going to be like, uh, 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 oh, oh, shit, oh, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you better have a fucking story right then and there ready to go. Of an, ex of an example where that led you astray. For example, um, I knew I had to be at court, right? I, I could give y'all one off the top of my head. I knew I had to be at court for an initial appearance one time because I had arrested an individual, but they called me, right, saying that they need help because they had, you know, a case that they needed and they needed help with another agent to come out and interview. I went out and interviewed and I woke up late for court, barely made it in time. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to help that bad. And it set me up for failure where I was like half asleep in court. So... That's an example of like a humble brag because what you're doing is you're showing that you're selfless, you want to go help people out, but you put yourself in a precarious situation where you almost, keyword, you almost fucked up your own obligation from work. Yeah. But you better have a story, guys. Guys, anytime you go ahead and give yourself um, like a, uh, like you make a humble brag or you say something about yourself, you better have a goddamn story to back up that trait. That you just that you just said because interviewers know that you're gonna say certain things. You need to have a story to show social proof and preferably make it be true, guys. Yeah, don't lying on interviews, lying about your resume. I know some people say, "Oh, bro, I, I, I've done it before. I got the job." Blah blah blah. It's just not a good way to get things done. And yeah. then heaven for God forbid they find out. Oh Lord, bro. Yeah. Because you can lie on an interview, right? When it comes to the job itself, if you can't match up to your actual standards that you set for yourself. You can look at, look at you like, bro, what are you doing here, man? And as a result, you may get fired. So honestly speaking, guys, come to the truth. And look, obviously, you don't want to show your bad side. That's going to be bad as well. But if it's going to be truthful and honest and directly what you're about, the match the company statements, at least have a good story that actually matches that. Because if it doesn't match, it's going to be an L, so. Yeah. So, guys, make sure that you always have a social proof story, preferably from your, re your prior job experience, that shows that um, you walk it like you talk it, yeah. right? Um, next. We got here. Uh, Why should they hire you? Yeah, oh, it's a yeah. question that they ask. Yep, 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 yep. So it's funny because this question this, here yeah. is a true question yeah. because it's simple, but at the same time, they, they want to see, okay, how are they going to answer this? And most people, they say, of course, oh, because I'm the best, you know, at what I do, da -da. typical answers everyone says. However, how should you answer this question in a smart way? It's very simple, guys. Most people think they're the best at everything that they do, think that they're the shit. 
However, you can say this is going to show ambition, hard work, and dedication. I want to stay late nights, early mornings, put in the work, and coachable. Because most people are not coachable. They come into this um, job or they come into this interview saying, yes, I'm that guy. I can get things done. But are they coachable? No. Are they willing to, are they willing to stay late? No. Are they willing to put in hours? No. And as well, God forbid they have overtime. Can you do overtime as well? So having the, the, the dedication and focus to say, you know what? I can put in the work long after hours and actually be there and show that as a result is huge. But again, make sure you understand that, hey, you're, you're dedicated. You can put in the work. You're willing to stay late and early mornings. And if you're really smart, like let's say you resource the company, you resource the position, et cetera, you go in there with a fucking 90-day action plan of what you plan to do. Bam. That right there, guys. Bam. That will set you apart from everybody else. You go in there with a plan. It could be 90 days, 30 days, 60 days, whatever it may be. Hey, I noticed that you guys are down in this, or I did my research and I found out blah, blah, blah. I can fill this void and make this happen for y'all. Or my skill set will allow me to alleviate this situation for you guys. So, again, every job and every position is different, but your job is to show I'm the fucking glove and I fit perfectly here. Yep. All right? And I've identified weak points that you guys have where I can come in and fix it. And not only that, you come in with a printed 30-day plan of what you intend to do, bruh. Like, but, you think anybody else that you're competing with has done that type of homework and that type of studying to figure out how they're going to blend with the company or the agency or whoever else they're going to work for? But remember, no. if you didn't do step two and three, which is research, plan, and see what they're actually about for the mission statement, how can you plan 90-day structure? You exactly. can't. So all these steps have to be done in order. Yeah. Yeah, you have to do everything, guys. You have to research yeah. the company appropriately. You have to research the position appropriately, et cetera. But, bro... You guys do that? Yo, you this put is, yourself bro, head and shoulders that above is the competition. Free game, bro. Yeah. That's gem free game. What the fuck, bro? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And and here's the other thing too, just so y'all know, just to let you guys fucking know how goddamn we give a fuck about y'all. Mm -hmm. I got my resume Yo, here. Marco, this Marco. resume, guys, got me hired by the FBI. When wow. I was an HSI special agent. This resume I'm gonna pull up for y'all here in a little bit. Okay? Yeah, you, and when yeah. I went there to the interview, they asked me. What are you going to do, you know, et cetera? And I told them straight up, well, this is my experience. This is what I've done. Um, I understand that the FBI is very interested in, you know, doing Title III intercepts, right? Doing large, complex investigations, OCDF cases, et cetera. I've already done them. Matter of fact, I'm investigating one right now, and I talked about that case to a degree, right? And I will tell them that um, I'd be able to, because since I've been able to do wiretaps with HSI, we don't have as much money funding as, as the FBI, I'd be doing wiretaps all the time because I would have the resources and the backing to do it. And mm -hmm. that would obviously be big because anytime you're doing wiretaps, et cetera, that's a big deal, right? It, it, uh, it, 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 um, it shows that you're running a complex investigation, et cetera. So um, I was able to bring what I did over at HSI and show I was able to do this with less resource. If I came over to y'all, I'm going to bring y'all stats up. I'm going to be able to go ahead and make, make, make the agency that much um, bring Better. stats to the agency. But notice, right? There's a common theme here. Preparation. Most people who prepare for the club, they pregame, they dress up, put on cologne, get lit, buy the latest drip, to go party. But a job interview, what do you do? Show up late, put a, a, a dress, to, sorry, uh, so you put your uh, wear together last minute, you put maybe a rag, raggedy shirt, maybe some jeans and some, maybe some like, luckily if you're some dress shoes, but it's all last minute planning versus this interview that we're talking about today, guys, where you come into it prepared, you come in with the knowledge from the company, what you're about, what you've done. And notice Myron said experience. Employers want experience, man. Listen, degree, degrees are fine. You know, you get your four-year degree. It's cool. But employers want experience, man. And most people don't have experience at all. They get a degree. Oh, yeah, I'm the shit. Four years in college. Four years in, sorry, yeah. in um, school. I know what I'm talking about. Bro, you don't know shit, man. Yeah. Experience goes a long way. So to add to this as well, like Myron said, Let's say you have, you have an employer, right? You're in an interview. They want to know, okay, what are your qual qualifications? Come up with a project. In the tech world, this is huge because most people in tech, they work on site projects themselves. For example, uh, Microsoft projects, or for example, um, uh, React projects, where like they actually have like a project on their own that they're working on. Hey, employer, just so you know, I have a project. I'm working on, a, on, a, on an app here. I can do these things. And it's like, wow. If you're on a project, that's huge. So having the actual work itself to show you don't on your own, it's a big uh, aid to uh, experience itself. Oh, you can show them the app to show them your skill set and how you built it. So, there you go. You know, again, that's the tech world. That's a little bit more of a nuanced thing, yeah. but that might help you out as well 
With that, another thing too, guys, with having that action plan that I mentioned, that's critical for a lot of you guys that want to negotiate higher salaries. Actually, at your, at, your, at your interview, if you use your technique, your prior job, what you do for them to help excel their company? Yeah, like some people do spreadsheets to like help manage like different components of the company. Yeah, or they might have like a, I saved them X Y Z dollars. Exactly, I was able to eliminate this unnecessary, you know, all these things go towards you having experience towards that job. It's simple. Yeah. So, um, so. Yeah. yeah, you brought your own resume. Yo, this guy's crazy, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a, my, my resume too. <laughs> Yo, no offense, bro. You don't see all my information, but <laughs> you can see his though. It's fine. I, I, I'll uh, again painfully transparent with you guys because I really do care. Um, when they ask if you have any questions, uh, right, guys. So at the end of the interview, they're gonna ask you if you have any questions, etc. Um, one thing, a good question that you can ask after is like. Well, I told you guys, you know, what I bring to the table. Are there any other ways that I can help and bring my expertise that I might have missed? Mm -hmm. Right? That shows that you genuinely care. You're trying to, um, you know, ensure that there's no missing blind spots or whatever it may be. And um, they're trying to be an asset. Okay? You know, hypothetically, if I were to be hired, what team would you guys put me on? What are the, uh, you know, what is that like? Um, who are the, what, what are the duties for that specific group or whatever it may be? Mm -hmm. You know, and then you can kind of go ahead and talk with it. Obviously, you know, this is a feeler type question. You know, you ask something like that depending on the nature of the interview, how it's going, right? Um, but these are things that can show that, like, you're genuinely interested in coming in and creating impact immediately. You're, you're not trying to just go there and work and get a job because what I want you guys to do is when you go to this job interview, I don't want you guys to go in there thinking, I want to collect a paycheck. No. You need to go in there. I need to add value, and by me adding value, I earn a paycheck. One more time for you. You're not going there to just get a job and get a paycheck. You're going there to add value to a company to earn a fucking paycheck. You need to go in with that mindset of how can you become an asset? How can I be a tool? That is how men are evaluated, guys. I hate to say it like that, but if you're going to talk about, you know, Kevin Samuels talked about this, you know, rest in peace to him. High value men, right? Guys that are uh, that have status, guys that are successful, etc. The reason why they're successful is because they're useful. Okay, we're not women. We don't get the benefit of being able to be useless and still be loved and cared for. As a man, Asagini. you must be useful. You must be resourceful. You must be an asset. If you're not an asset, they don't give a fuck about you. Okay, so your job is literally to expend all of your skill sets to be used to make the company and or agency or whoever you're applying for better with your skill set. You're coming in to earn a paycheck by adding value back. And when you come in with that mindset into the interview of how can I help y'all become better, that's a way different frame than motherfuckers going in there saying, I'm here for a paycheck. Because you best believe a lot of niggas are going to go there to get a fucking paycheck. But you go in there. See how we're building on the fucking cake, guys? You go in there, dress well. Your punctuality is good. You smell good. Your pa facial hair is trimmed. You fucking mean business. You're well-rested. You've already been chopping it up with the people there. You're showing that you're personable. You're not a fucking autistic retard, okay? Um, you're confident. You shake hands. You stand up when you speak. Um, you speak in an affirmative voice. You speak in an active voice. You're confident of yourself, but you're not cocky, right? You're coming in with extra resumes. You're prepared. You research the fucking company. You understand what the position is. You understand what the duties are, but you want to go ahead and continue to make sure that you're uh, catching all the blind spots and you're going to be an asset for this company. And if they hire you, you are by far the best fucking um, candidate that candidate. they have. You, and you're coming in with a fucking action plan where, hey, I looked at some of your guys' numbers, blah, blah, blah. I can, uh, I see some of your weak points. This is where I can help. At my last job, this is what I did, and I uh, helped them save money, or I helped them cut uh, costs in this regard. Bro, do you guys understand when you come in from that mindset of how can I add value, that's a completely different frame of I'm here to collect a paycheck, and you're going to smack the shit out of all your other competition that are there to pick up a paycheck. Actually, that's your point as well. So when you come in to give rather than receive, that's... 100% a W. But what I do with this question is, I flip it. So I say all the time with this question, after answer, I say, listen, you see my, my uh, skills, my skill set, what I'm about, how I want to help the company. A question for you as an employer. How is it going to benefit me in my career moving forward? So for example, if this is the question that I'm asking an employer, hey, listen, this is great. I'm here to help, of course. I'm here to be an asset to the company. But in return, how is it going to help me move forward as an employee? For example, my career, my education. And it's funny because that puts the question on them 
and it's answered to you in that sense. And honestly speaking, guys, most people in interviews never ask questions. They just take questions to themselves. But in the interview segment itself, whoever's asking the question is in power. So give them a question back too. Ask questions about the job itself, how does it benefit you? Because, guys, it's a partnership. When you're getting hired from an uh, employer, it has to align with their values and, and goals as well. But, you're, but yours too. I mean, obviously speaking, guys, you're, you're there to work for a paycheck. But at the same time, like Mike said, make it make it go further. It can help you with your career, with your experience for another job, uh, with your degree, whatever it may be. Ask questions for yourself to the employer as well. That way it's not redundant and not boring as well. Because, guys, interviews, man, are very redundant for the most part. But you come in, you add value, ask questions as well. It's interaction rather than just like a, a regular interview. So that goes a long way. Cool. All right. Um, and we have some more chats here. And then the last point. And don't be name dropping in there, guys. That's another thing. Don't be like in there name dropping if you know someone that works at the company or something like that. If it's brought up by an employer or whatever, or if you subtly mention it, but like, don't be there. Oh, yeah, I know such and such the boss of this place. Like, no, don't do that. I mean, you don't you, want to try to show that you're like, um, hey, you better hire me because I know X, Y, Z, man. I mean, usually they have a, a section that says um, recommended by or like, for example, yeah. who you know. Yeah. So you can just say it there, but don't say it in person. Yeah. Unless it asks you. Yeah. 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 Uh, what else? And then we got um, one last thing here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll pull up my resume. Chats? Yep. Okay, let's do it, man. Austin, Austin C, C. goes, uh, thanks for all the encouragement, guys. Interview coming up for a position as a power lineman. Time to double my income. Sell your video games. Oh, no. Uh, we already, we got that one from before. Yeah, uh, we did that one, too. Okay, We cool. got here. Um, bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, FNF. Longtime fan of the show. Really enjoy the content. Grab uh, Tiki Taki on After Hours episode. You'll have a fire episode. He's only... And <laughs> okay, uh, Bob, Bob says I'm 22 years old, work at two remote software engineering jobs, bringing in around two hundred sixty thousand dollars annually. I'm self-taught with no degree. I have a free time to get a third job. Should I? If the answer is yes, I'll be sacrificing time with my parents' old age. That's a personal decision, man. That you only you can make. Yeah, it's up to you. Um, hi guys, I truly appreciate y'all. Um. I always get the job when I get interviewed. My, my man. main problem is getting interviewed in the first place. Can you make an episode about tweaking resumes? I also have a finance degree. Okay, I'll show you guys yes. my resume we here have in a bit. Examples of good and bad ones as well with yeah. my as well to kind of compound that. Uh, thanks for inspiring me to do better. Turn 25 today, clear debt, excellent credit scores, working on side hustle alongside being a full time paralegal to get experience and qualify as a lawyer. UK top three tips to get uh, to get a mill by 30, please. Um, I kind of hate when people say. By thirty, yeah. By forty, yeah. There's no time limit to, to success. Yeah. I think that path or that like mindset keeps you kind of depressed because if you don't reach it by thirty, yeah, you're kind of depressed at that point. Yeah. Versus, hey, you know what? I'm gonna work as long as possible to get my goals, no matter what age it is. So I just say the time limit itself for age is kind of like puts you in a box. But again, that's just my opinion on it. Invest in real estate, my friend. Yeah. But at the same time, like understand that you know slow and steady wins the race. You yeah. know. Um. You're a man, bro. You're not like a female where you need to, you know, live your life in your 20s and even your 30s, man. I mean, life gets better for you as a man if you do the work, bro. So, you know, enjoy your career, work hard, save your money, invest in real estate. Don't do nigga shit. Definitely don't. Because one of the biggest mistakes guys do once they become a six-figure earner is they start living like they make a million dollars a year. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that live paycheck to paycheck guys are actually six-figure earners. <laughs> They're trapped. Yeah. Because what ends up happening is they're able to get a taste of luxury but they can't afford it sustained. So what ends up happening is they're constantly trying to keep up with the Joneses. They're getting the 5 Series BMW. They're getting the nice house because uh, they can get it, but can they maintain it at a comfortable level? A lot of the times, no, and it drags them into debt. So don't be one of these six-figure guys that, like, you know, you make your first 100, make your first 120, 130, but you're spending money like you're a multimillionaire. A lot of y'all spend more money than me, and you guys make 100K a year. Like, bro, no. Don't fucking go out here and buy a fucking BMW 6 Series and, you know, a coupe and... You get a nice ass house and be in downtown my downtown of a major city. All this is shit with all these expenses just because you're making hundred grand a year. No, you should be saving that money so you can make more money. So anyway, okay. but yeah, man, you don't want to be keeping up with the Joneses, man. And that's higher earners, hundred k, two hundred k, three hundred k per year. You guys always fall for it because you guys get a taste of that luxury and you get addicted to it. And you stay in the middle class. And you stay in the middle class. It's pretty much like dying shit. now, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, what else do we got here? Famous. Uh, we got Strong Nerd. 
Yep. Use bright white paper to print your resume. Depending on the job or company, bring a PowerPoint. I gave a presentation for my government contractor position and my for my promotion in the military. Also practice speaking in front of the mirror. Great topic, guys. Yeah, um, most places are not going to have you do a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but in his situation, he's a contractor. More than likely what happened was he was already hired. And then it was time for contract renewal, so he just presented a PowerPoint of how they can continue to add value. Okay. So that's how a lot of co government contractors go. But that's fine. I mean, nothing wrong with having a PowerPoint as well. Um, how to save my best? Uh, how to how to save my best buddy who's 26, uh, going out with a 33 year old woman who never married, no children, has two dogs. It's like he's in a spell. He brought up the age gap, and she was shit talking him and raging, saying, "Why are guys discussing and superficial?" Of course she's going to say that, bro. Of course she's going to say I mean, that, bro. bro. <laughs> typical How defense dare of you? age. Typical female defense, yeah, once they, once they hit the wall. I mean, dude, again, your friends that you want to save, we understand it 100%. We would want to do the same thing. However, people want to get help when they want to be helped. So as a result, he might have to get burned by this woman to actually understand. And if you tell him as a friend, yo, bro, you're being bad, whatever. Oh, you're a hater, bro. So it's kind of like let them be burned and be there for them when they get burned, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, a so, lot of guys are stupid, bro. Yeah, they're not gonna take this information in unless they get burned. Yeah, you know, it's part of the process. Unfortunately, uh, black and blacker goes. Hey, Martin Fresh, <laughs> shout out to Mo, sixteen year old fan here, work at KFC. Can you guys touch on how to become socially calibrated? I have zero friends and act autistic as fuck around women. Yeah, bro, practice. That is literally you going outside, getting experience, talking to people. Actually, here's a test you can do. Right, be sixteen, bro. Join clubs at your school. Yo. yo. Get Play a, a sport. Get a sport or hobby, I was about to say, right? So it's like-minded individuals you're not afraid to talk to, and you get to learn people's skills because, again, most people, they stay inside on a computer playing games. That's all they do. Or they just go to work and then back home. But extra, extra activities, for example, sports, hobbies, extra communities like uh, Key Club, Toastmasters, you gain experience, many people, and people's skills. So that Not only that, with men, men tend to bond over um, creating things together or a shared mission, okay? Mm -hmm. So... Um, let's say you have an interest. I don't give a fuck if you like playing Magic the Gathering cards. Go to a Magic the Gathering meetup and meet people there that have similar interests with you. That's one of the best ways to bond with other men. Pause. Is through a shared activity and or a shared mission. So, um, whatever your interests or hobbies are, find people, if, find a club that does it, go there, make friends. I would say though. And you gotta bite the bullet and understand that it's gonna be very uncomfortable to meet new people, but fuck it. It is what it is, man. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's life. In a social media age, Call of Duty with mics is not socializing, bro. That is not socializing at all. It's actually lazy. And getting out there in person, shaking hands, kissing babies, that's how you do it, bro. Pause. All right. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, is this a uh, Mexican gym uh, muscles? Yeah. Thanks to the DBZ stream, I brought uh, it brought back memories of me and my cousin watching DBZ, W Martin, W Mo, W Bills, W I C W Fresh. Even though he was there for ten minutes, much love to the whole Eminem crew. <laughs> yeah, I came in late, late night before my flight, uh, and man. I dashed out of here because they didn't want me on the stream, but so I left. Man. Oh, you mean uh, one of the niggas? Yeah, he man, said he used that shit as an excuse. Hey, man, he want me here, bro. Fresh, get out of here. First said, "Okay, I'm out." <laughs> uh, my being on X is amazing. You are that nigga. I appreciate it, uh, Wizards. Yeah, guys. Please follow me on um, on X, aka Twitter. Um, it's Unplug Fit X. I'm tweeting on there every day, uh, posting videos on there. Get way more active. Y'all are gonna see me. The goal is to get to 100k followers on there and uh, grow that um, X account. Um, and I talk about certain topics that I might not necessarily talk about on here. Uh, okay, Swagballer goes. Can you tell me how important you think passion is? Finding a job. I'm in a combat role in the U.S. military for six years. I'm doing PT cert for passion and getting degree in IT, which isn't passion, but for money. Um, mm. This is a good question, bro. I mean, I'll be honest with y'all. There's going to be times where you're doing jobs that you're not necessarily passionate about, but it pays the bills. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's where you have to ensure that if you are doing a job that you don't necessarily like that much, but it pays the bills, um, make sure you have a hobby or an interest that you do on the side. I would say, man, like... Or funnel that money from the job that you don't like into a business endeavor that you do like that you can potentially... Um, Grow, scale, and be able to walk away from your regular job. From people if you still can. dream of using passion as your main way to make money, but in real life, that's not possible for everybody, bro. Yeah. And as a result, you need to make money not for your family and for yourself. So that's a priority, bro. Making money. And here's the other thing too, man. Uh, you know, we say women are delusional, whatever, right? Like they're in a fairy tale world or whatever. I get a million. Men are too. Million. Yo, a lot of y'all niggas are are <laughs> fucking delusion too. Men are too, man. Bro, I'll keep it a thousand with you guys. A lot of you guys. Haven't earned the privilege 
of being able to do something you love and work on your passion. I'll say that again for y'all. It's the truth. A lot of you guys haven't earned the privilege of being able to do something that you love and you're passionate about. A lot of the times, you got to do shit you fucking hate, right? To build up the capital, to build up the character, to build up the skill set, to build up the resume, to build up the, um, the traits that will put you in a position to be a more attractive employee and or um, individual to be able to do what you're actually passionate about. You got to get out the mud a lot of times, guys. Again, this is why I tell y'all all the time, don't follow, don't fall for this entrepreneur porn and this bullshit on Instagram and TikTok where people are, I make this much money, blah, blah, blah. Bro, a lot of it is fucking cap, okay? A lot of it is fucking cap, right? We're one of the few influencers here that tell you guys there's nothing wrong with having a job. There's nothing wrong with getting that earned income from a job that you might not necessarily like and funneling that money into something that you're a bit more passionate about that you can go ahead and build down the road. But the point is, is there's going to definitely be times where you're doing a job that you don't like to create a future future that you will like. I mean, we can see it nowadays, bro. Phil, Phil rappers, artists, I want to say music industry plants. It's kind of like they want to have that hobby and passion as their main thing. But bro, you got to pay your bills, man. And I mean, look at Jay-Z. He sold stuff, like obviously drugs, before he got into his career. But I funded his career. You got to come in with some money, bro. You can't come in wishing, oh, you know what? I'm going to just magically have my career. Yeah, I'm just going to do my passion. Be successful. Nigga, who's funding that shit? Yeah. And, and here's the thing. If you don't have the funds to properly fund your passion, market it. you ain't going nowhere. Exactly. You ain't going nowhere. Could you imagine I said, yo, you know, I'm just going to start this podcast from scratch. We start off with Blue Yeti mics. Shitty ass cameras, shitty production quality. We would have never got noticed. But and luckily, no I had a job, right? We we had jobs where we were able to invest that money into the studio. Started off right with some higher level of production quality, where people wanted to tune in in the first place. But had we not had that ability to invest into the studio from the rip, we would have been fucked and not taken off. And people forget the skills we learned from our prior experiences, jobs, and, and careers helped us now, five years later. Yeah. So. Um. Myron Updates. Follow Myron on Twitter, Unplug FedEx. Yo, shout out to you, bro. He's running uh, another Twitter. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, for real? For me, yeah. Shout out to Myron <laughs> Updates. He does the Zerk updates, too. Uh, 166K left on a 205K mortgage. Townhouse looks to be worth 330K to 360. Would you recommend using a HELOC to pay off the credit cards off that are collecting a lot of interest? That way you are only paying off one thing. Mm. I am not a fan of taking a HELOC and using it to pay off any other debt besides yeah, you know, real estate shit, man. Um if you're at a point now where you might have to do a HELOC to pay off credit card debt, you, you fucked up, my friend. Um, try to find another way, dude. Uh, you know, because remember, you got to pay that HELOC back anyway. So, you know, I, I get it because the interest rate from the HELOC is probably going to be less than the credit cards. But still. But, bro, if you're going to do that, lesson learned. Like, d never do that shit again. Like, guys, we tell you guys to use credit cards for money that you have. <laughs> you know, the goal of credit cards is to use a credit card to buy shit. With money that you actually really do have in your bank account so that you can get your credit score up and get free shit. Yeah. And then you pay it off immediately and don't pay them any interest. It's money you're going to spend anyway. Yeah. Not extra. So that's the key, man. That You only spend on credit cards what you actually would have spent regularly if you had had cash. Yeah. All right? The purpose of using credit cards is for convenience and building up your credit score with money that you already have. I mean, just pay the debt off, man. I mean, pro yeah. it's so simple. Well, he, but here's the thing. He's got to do a HELOC now to do it. Yeah, but to get to that point, man... Do it, bro, but you, man, I wish I could see you a person so I could smack the fucking shit out of you for doing that. Like that, bro, like when I hear shit like that, it fucking gets me angry because it's like, you, you made bad decisions, man. You fucked up. Like you shouldn't be taking a HELOC to pay off fucking consumer debt. The fuck are you doing? Well, at least he's starting now. Yeah. I so. mean, look, pay off the credit card debt because I already know that interest rate is probably 30%. I don't even want to fucking know, yeah. right? Your credit score is probably taking a hit. Take the HELOC, pay it off, and you better fucking pay that HELOC back off and never, ever, ever fucking spend more than you make ever again with credit cards. Then on top of that, I don't want nobody ever taking cash out refinances or HELOCs or anything like that to pay off consumer debt. You get HELOCs and cash out refinances to buy another asset. Yeah. I think people forget too, especially Americans, that like having money in the bank is one thing. But if you have like a, lot, like a lot of debt yourself, it's negative. So in reality, you have no money at all. But again... Guys, don't be That's stupid. Stupid. Don't be like a fucking female spending money like a fucking slave-minded consumer buying shit that you don't need or shit that you can't afford. Fuck that shit, man. You're a man. You could get by on little. Okay? Yeah. Damn. <sighs> the more you know. 
the better, I guess. Yeah, man. Uh, like, bro, I don't want these credit card companies raping you guys, man. Like, goddamn, bro. Like, because I know them niggas are charging you. Twenty eight percent, yeah. Plus, and, and you and you have a, easily, and, and you got to get a helix. So you got the debt. They're probably destroying you right now. Yeah. <laughs> what they don't tell you is it's a variable interest rate. Translation: <laughs> as the date gets worse and worse, we reserve the right to increase the interest rate higher on you, nigga. Before you know, it, you're paying double or triple. Yeah. In the so. minimum payment, you'll never pay it off with the minimum payment. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Now you're a real slave at that point. Various layers, Big Boss and CEO Network. Let's go have a great night. Cody, Don't man, yo, he was a trooper in Columbia, man. I compare him to like David Goggins and you. He's like okay. a mixture of both. He's oh, a little bit he? taller than you, but he's definitely that guy. David Goggins and you mixed together. Shout out to Cody, man. Awesome guy. All right. Pause. Shout out to him. Um, uh, hey, FNF, will you be making a follow-up episode on this? Maybe on how to move up in the workplace and deal with politics in bro, that environment? I can do that all day, bro. Like the biggest <laughs> yeah, thing corporate in a woke is ass. being able to actually maneuver in the marketplace without hurting people's feelings, but at the same time having the skill and knowledge to move forward people's I want to say agendas. Because the biggest How'd you thing, navigate bro, a woke ass place, bro. At least in law enforcement, it was all men mostly, so yeah. like I didn't have to deal with like the, the pussiness as much. You have, but you had a lot of female a counterparts face and and a, a little bit of a character because most people say, "Oh, I'm RP. I'm aware. Everyone should know about it." No, my friend. No one should know about it. <laughs> Actually speaking, Especially the more they know about you that you're into this, this mindset, <laughs> oh, the worse yeah. for you, bro. Yeah, in corporate man. America, bro, oh, holy, oh, it's the opposite. So you, my friend, have to be very careful what you say <laughs> and what you share with your friends because their friends will tell HR about you, you or your, your ass Facts. instantly. You stupid. So yeah. And get your ass fired. So. Especially in tech. Bro, Woo! I can't tell you how much I have to like grip my teeth like, ah. Women's international day. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about women like, yeah. like that. I'm just kidding. But like, but like, <laughs> niggas complaining speaking, about their girl being a whore and shit. Bro, you're just like misogyny. I have to wear a t-shirt that says uh, "Women's International Day." I love women. <laughs> Mind you, I don't love women. But I don't put on a t-shirt, bro. That's a so freaking I gay. That shit. Yeah, but again, Yo. I'm corporate America. <laughs> I play the part. I gotta act like I like I care. But, it, but eventually, <laughs> what happens is once you get a little bit higher in a company <laughs> and you follow certain agendas, you kind of like maneuver in a certain way. You can kind of like. Squeeze out of some, bro. Uh, some things, holly. some things, but not, but not everything. God How dare damn, you? Yeah, it's not easy, bro. Yo, okay. Uh, but, but see, that in itself is a skill because people can't do it, bro. To help yourself to that level where you can actually do, go through some of these things, like it's not, it's it's a lot of pride that you have to take away and ego. So you know what? I'll do this bullshit for now to move forward in, in this company. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's all you're saying, basically. Oh lord. So all right, what else do we got here? Ball out goes black men edition. Corn rolls, waves, a low cut, high fade, the best hair to look very presentable. <laughs> okay. What the fuck? Okay. All right, uh, man. Any of you get into wind turbines tomorrow? No experience or training needed. You will start around 100K a year. They will pay for literally everything. You got to be in decent shape and not be afraid of heights. Just talk about how safe you are. Most important, how you focus on quality and tell them that you still manage to do production without faulting on your safety. Number one or two, quality. I make 170K last year using the money to start my crime scene cleanup company. Wow. All right. Shout out to you, bro. Um, would you rather be falsely accused of rape, go to trial for nine months, or will be proven completely innocent, or have a baby with a girl, uh, but find out nine months later after it's born that it's not yours? I'm not gonna lie. Number two. Number two all day. Having that in the atmosphere and the news that you're a rapist, bro, is a L. Now I'll take number one, nigga. That's 18 years. Nine months versus 18 years. Huh? No, it's nine months out there. No, no. Right? You know that it's not yours. Oh. In nine months. And then oh, you, shit. You, oh, and then you're, you can leave. You, you're gone. Oh, shit. So I'll say number two, bro. All day. Why is this nigga asking this question? <laughs> <you're> <laughs> like, 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 in a predicament. Nigga, why are you asking that, bro? Like, <laughs> <laughs> before we were talking about how to get a job, this nigga talking about, would you rather be falsely accused? Like, bro. Random. Mateo, you already know. Appreciate that, Mateo. Uh, and that TB, TTB podcast. Hey, guys, so I have a good resume and built up a lot of certifications and wrote four books about cybersecurity. I've been applying like crazy, no luck, but I did land an IT service desk for Commercial Bank. Take that job, bro. Yeah. Having a job and going to a job interview is way better, way better than not having a job. See, this problem with Americans especially, they <laughs> have their nose up their ass. They think, you know what? I have a degree. I have certifications. I have the, I want to say, presumed skills, so I should not, not work paper. a lower job than what I think I should work. And as a result, Mexicans, immigrants, even myself, we work jobs that are not I want to say the most appeasing, but we understand getting money right now, having experience in a job that's similar to what you're you're doing, bro, is huge. And even though it may, it may be front, maybe be he's like, he said front desk, uh, yeah, that by itself you can kind of maneuver and 
cater IT towards desk. and curate towards cybersecurity. So helping tickets so and stuff. Just being in that job, when you go play for another job, you go to interview. Hey, uh, what do you do right now? Oh, I have a job in this this, yeah. this company. That's oh, way more favorable, bro. Versus than being unemployed. I have bro. no job. Yeah, I need a job, again. bro. Yeah, you come in. You come in with a little bit more of an abundance mindset, and you're less thirsty too. Same shit yeah. with bitches, man. Yeah. So, so yeah, bro. Take a job, even if it's not what you want to do. Even if it's beneath you, especially if it's in your career path, use it to your advantage. Learn the skills, and then hey, apply for another job. Yeah. So you're way better off having a job and going. So, and that might be the reason why you might not be getting called back is because you don't have a job. So take that fucking job. Yeah. And then reapply to all those jobs. Yep. And uh, keep the keep the track. Trust and if me, you're bro. smart. Look on LinkedIn, people that are in the company that you want to uh, go to, look at their skill set, look at what they put as their task to do, Cur- curate that to your current job and make it make sense. So when you go to interview, wow, you're actually following our pattern of what most people do at a job for your other job. This is great. Yeah. So. Um, all right. Uh, we have another one. Uh, Dell Boy one How do I show value to a business who may reflect on questions back to the interviewer that they can't improve? I don't understand the question. Yeah, I don't get it either. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and count down, <laughs> recap, guys, the show real fast. Okay, so guys, all right, number one, okay, is wear a suit, clean shaven, minimize facial or and or minimize facial hair, right? Conceal any tattoos. Don't go in there looking like a degenerate. Shower. Don't smell bad, right? God forbid you- clean suit, fitted, nice. No face tattoos, bro. Yeah, man. That's L, bro. <laughs> Come on, guys. The, the, the whole tattoo thing is like, no, nah, man. Like, don't get ta- if you're gonna get tattoos, make sure you have them in areas where if you wear a suit, they're not visible. Okay, guys. Yeah, bro. Um, re- uh, research the company and their position you're applying for. Bring a copy of a resume for yourself and for the employer. Um, always match up your strengths with the duties of the job. Okay. Arrive to the job interview 20, 30 minutes ahead of time. Okay. It's key. Be polite to everyone at the venue. All right. Um. When you introduce yourself, use the seat methods. You know, introduce yourself, your skills, your experience, education, achievements, and the type of person you are. Uh, when they ask you what is your biggest weakness, humble brag it. Say something along the lines of, "I find it hard to say no to to helping people or taking on other responsibilities, something like that." Or I'm a perfectionist, etc. And you better have a goddamn story to back it up. Okay. Um, when uh, when they ask you uh, if they should hire you, have you know. Uh, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day plan where you are going to outline how you can actually help and add value to the company that you're going to be working for. Very important. And it'll help you if you want to negotiate for higher salaries as well. Okay. Um, when they ask you if you have any questions, this is your point to, you know, show that you're inquisitive and, you know, remember things might come up on interview where you might actually have some real questions, but what you can say is, Hey, um, what else can I do to help you guys out? Right. Come in with, again, when you enter the interview, guys, Enter the interview from the frame of, I'm not here to get a paycheck and just get a job. I'm here to add value to this company. Okay? I'm here to be an asset. I'm here to be a valuable tool. And then, uh, after you're done, guys, send a follow-up email, right? And say, hey, if you guys need anything else from me, I, you know, say something along the lines of this. Thank you for the opportunity. I enjoyed the process and learning more about the position. I'll be an asset. And if you need anything else from me, please don't hesitate to contact me. And you leave your email and your phone number so that you can go ahead and um, if they need to reach you again, and, and obviously you're being polite that they gave you the opportunity in the first place. Yeah. So send that follow-up email after your interview. All right, guys? Done. So we covered uh, 10 steps Yep. you can follow. So do we want to show them a bad resume? Yes. An example of a bad There's resume? There's three emails Wait, hold on, we have here. Before we do this. Or yours. Before we do this, what are the likes at, man? Because we're giving you guys crazy goddamn value, Guys, you follow this to a T? 1.1, bro. Wow. We should, but there's 2,800 y'all watching on YouTube, and bro. then we got another four four on Yo, Rumble. These are the shows, man. They'll change your life, man. We got like 7,000 y'all in here watching Yo, live. You get a job making money. You can support your family yourself. That's huge, bro. Bro, y'all better like the goddamn video, man. We need at least 2,000 likes on fucking YouTube, or else we're not showing no goddamn resumes. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. Because, yo, th- you guys have been really cheap with the goddamn likes. Damn. We give you guys all this value. He ain't playing, man. Prepare this stuff for y'all. What other YouTubers, right, are giving you guys the diversified level of value that we're giving you guys? And we show you our personal information as well. That's true. Which is, well, you do. Knocks ourselves and shit. You do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. Hey, man, shout out to Myron, bro. Myron, Myron g- Games in the building, bro. Myron giving them the drop. <laughs> yeah, the drop. The, the sauce. Oh, yeah, God. This game is to be sold, not told. You know what I mean? Mm. But, um, but yeah, uh, so we got right now. 1.3k likes. Come on, guys. 2k at least, man. Uh, we got right now. Let's see, updated version. We have currently 
One point five. I see one point five. Yep. Okay, it's going up. It's going up. But yeah, honestly, guys, man, follow these ten steps, bro. I'm telling you right now. Most people come into this interview game, or for example, getting a job is it's like fun and it's playful. This is serious, guys. This is your career. This is your future. This is your actual like future itself. Come into it prepared. And the main focus, guys, is understanding that yes, you're coming in with confidence. You're coming in to get a job, but do you align with their values and their goals? And like like Martin said, come with experience, man. Come in there having a prior story or prior project you're working on. Like and you can show an employer that you're serious, you're about it, and as well, ask questions. Don't just sit there and receive questions. Ask about questions for yourself. This is benefit. Is it, is it going to benefit me and my career and my education? To, you know, to work with you guys is going to help me move forward in my career. All these things help towards creating that relationship with, with the employer. And as well, keep in mind, people don't prepare. For these things and that's why they fail if you prepare you won't fail and as a result you get the job or you know it's funny some some companies right may not hire you on the spot but they'll never get an interview with you and they may hit you back later on they might say, hit hey, you back yeah. you know what yeah hey we did a revamp for our current uh, selection uh, are you still interested in, in this in this job you've been surprised man it happens all the time i came in Yo, clean shaven. actually my, i came in clean shaven right before i uh, my first day here yeah with, with fnf i came in clean shaven I made sure I was prepared for any question that Myron had for me and I had to make sure, yo, whatever expertise I said, yo, I was, and I was completely honest. So if there was something I didn't make sure I didn't lie about it. I mean, you, you, you did fuck up though, bro. Of course. Came in overweight. (laughs) It's fine though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're working on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I made no, no excuse, no excuses, no excuses. But yeah, man, this is going to help you guys a lot with your career. All right. Uh, How many likes we got now? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. What what are we at, guys? Get the likes. One point six. That's it, bro. Damn, man. bro. They don't want it, man. They don't yeah, want. I guess sauce. they don't want it, man. All right. Well, uh, end the show. I guess so. <laughs> Listen, bro, guys. This is simple, man. Come in, like the video. Get the sauce. It's simple. It's free. It's Shit. really free, bro. We could charge niggas for this in a course, like niggas do. Oh, learn about credit. Learn about success, bro. This is for free, man. Shit, man. This is all free, man. Off the dome, by the way. Yeah, facts. Like uh, this is in us, not out of us. Yeah, so. yeah. Just uh, trying to impart this wisdom to you guys, so that you guys can go ahead and succeed 1. in you point know, corporate 7. America, government America, whatever it may be. Hell, this stuff could be used anywhere. If you're in Australia, UK, I, honestly, anywhere you want to prepare for a job, if you take those steps that we just gave you guys, you're gonna be head and shoulders above most of the other people that interview. Guys, you know I'm huge on, on, on networking, right? This right here is elementary to, to networking. It's getting an interview with somebody. Not coming across as uh, cocky, arrogant, but at the same time, giving value to receive value in a short period of time. And I think for most people, guys, like if you can understand this concept of interviews, it goes along with your career itself. So, I mean, this is elementary, but it's still a good foundation. Okay. Um, uh, we'll hit the chat. Hybrid Muscle goes, my bro is married to a... Oh, Lord. To Ching. Okay. They've been together for 10 years now, and she has taken him from the family. She hasn't brainwashed. Can I save him? We caught her cheating, and he knew it was wrong, but stayed and believed her lies. What to do? Oh, oh bro. man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I love when me and Myron do this. Yeah, Damn. Man. Bro, that's the hell, man. Listen, bro. I mean, again, people that want, that want help will get help. If they don't want help, bro, can't really change that, bro. Yeah, I mean, bro, if she cheated on him. And, and he's still there? And he's still there. Not like a brainwashed. Yeah, man. Like, you really can't, like, MK oh Ultra, my God. even if you hit him with a Falcon Punch, he ain't gonna wake up, man. Oh. Yo, that sound load is crazy, bro. That sound bite is crazy. Falcon Punch. That's <laughs> one of the memories, bro. Yeah. Smash Brothers. So, yeah, man. Anyway, they didn't hit the like button. All right, bro. I guess we'll close it out. I guess y'all are not gonna see the resume that got one me hired point, by the bureau. 1.8, bro. We need 200 more of y'all, bro. Bro, this is simple, man. You're gonna see his actual resume. Which I said you should, he shouldn't show it, but hey, if you want to show it, bro, I mean, that's on him. Yeah. All the Rumble Ninjas, all you got to do is open up another tab on YouTube and just like it. Because again, guys, as y'all know, we're fucking demonetized. So we're doing this shit basically for free, man. 1.9K. Yep. 100 more. 100 more, man. Simple. But um, we got here, Jay Cross says, like the motherfucking video, Rumble <laughs> on YouTube. Facts, man. It's so simple, bro. It, man. I don't know why. Like, bro, niggas just don't like liking the videos, man. Dude, and this, this is, episode right here... They just want to, like... No, I'm not liking it. Fuck these niggas. Dude, this is better than After Hours, we honestly got, speaking, bro. We got a bro. lot of hate watchers. A lot of y'all have been preach fans on the low. We do. Okay. Sauce God FPS says, 
was listening while working, pulled up my phone to like this video, and got fired for being on my phone. Thanks, Myron. That's, come on, bro. Hey, stop not, lying, bro. We're totally working, bro. Stop lying, That's bro. cat, man. That's cat, man. Really? Stop the cat. Jake Ross again says, the lack of likes oh, to get benefits. It. it looks like. Getting a job shows how much people don't care about jobs. Whack ass generation, man. Yeah, bro. A job. Not only that, yo, we only got, what? How many watch? We got barely, not even 3K on YouTube watching. And we got uh, Four. on Rumble 4,000. So we got about 7,000 y'all in here. But I'll tell you guys this. If we're doing some nonsense content, yeah. right? Y'all would be like, yeah, woo! It'd be like, you know, like everyone tonight. be in here, man. Like tonight. Yeah, man. So it's <laughs> crazy, bro. Like how it's like, it's okay. These though. are the shows. We're going we're gonna to keep giving the value even if less people watch. But the, These are the shows that the men, the men are the boys. And I think for most people, you could have, for example, uh, the looks. You could have some, maybe some of the money. Maybe something to clout. Yeah. But the foundation isn't there. Our goal is really to help you guys, bro. Yeah. We understand that bringing on the chicks, you're going to get the views and shit like that. Sure. But our goal is to take a, a, a share of that and convert you guys into better, noble, more attractive, able-bodied, competent, and wealthy men. I'll tell you this. I was in Columbia, I was in Columbia earlier uh, this weekend. Mm-hmm. I met a bunch of people over there, expats from America, especially Miami as well. And they getting girls, man, on the wrong pretense. And as a result, this whole foundation is shaky, brother. Very shaky. Yep. I right hear So it's... 304s, man. Wow. Big 304s. Crazy. Uh, Mo, why are you cabbing, bro? What you shaving? You got peach fuzz under that chin. LOL, all of, brother. <laughs> That's from Aurelian Views. All right. So, all right. So let's go ahead and just show them the bad resume first. Yes. Then we can show them a good one. All right. So, guys, we got some examples here of bad resumes. And you may say this is common sense. But unfortunately, guys, today, common sense is not common anymore. So, pull up if you don't mind, Bills. Got you right now. So it says Fresh really loves Columbia. Uh, not as much, bro. I like. <laughs> I think things have changed a lot. Okay, Christopher Gwanan. This is his profile here. Oh, no, this is the actual good ones. This shows the bad ones. Should be the first link at the very top left. Here we go. So this is a website called... Um, so I can't read the font there. Anyhow, so these are some examples of bad resumes. First one, guys. Resume.io. There you go is bad spellers. Guys, we live in a technology-based economy, right? There's Grammarly, there's spell checks, Microsoft Word. Bro, if you're going to an interview with a resume, with bad spelling, nigga, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Because what's going to happen is, hold on. This nigga was in my office. I can't spell? Bro, rumble out of here. The fact is, guys, is like, look, fu- most people, most- I'm just saying, bro. Most people, right, understand spelling is important. But it comes to interview with bad spelling, bro. What are you doing, my friend? Anyhow, so guys, you see a word history, server, and there's a bunch of errors here in this actual spelling, which is horrendous, guys. And again, bad spelling and grammar are one of the quickest ways, um, come on a little bit, to get your resume um, thrown, up, thrown away. So let's say you send a resume to a company. They offer, say, you know what? This person came to spell. Don't show up to the, to the interview, man. You're out of here. No. Nope. Qu- disqualified from the very rip. So, guys, this is one thing that can get you disqualified off rip. So, some of you resumes now have bad spelling. You're like, wait, why don't I get a call back? Why don't I, I, I get a chance to get an interview? Bro, you can't even spell, nigga. What the fuck? Okay. Number two is amateur graphic designer. Guys, you guys know Chris from the podcast, right? Our producer, Chris. Where is he? He's on the way. Chris actually is a good uh, graphic designer. He works. He worked on uh, OfferUp. Sorry, uh, not OfferUp. Uh, um, what's it called? Fiverr. Upwork, Fiverr. Upwork and Upwork. Fiverr, right? Yeah, but he was like he was top a five rank star and, yeah, rated Upwork. designer. However, most of you are working for companies, and they want to see your work, but not on a resume, right? So more often than not, putting an image on your actual resume, whether it's for graphic design or a different type of type of career it's gonna say tacky and not professional and as a result it'll turn people off so you can see here ham dugo it's a random random ass name puts on the left hand side there some coins and some arrows going up bro anybody would tell you as an employer you put a photo like this on a resume bro <laughs> dog i'm looking at you like nigga are you serious this is not a this is not a a freaking contest. This is, this, is, this is an actual professional segment. So, I mean, listen, guys. Number two red flag here is do not, I repeat, 
Do not put fancy colors sometimes or images on your resume. A simple red or black or white is perfect, but anything other than that, bro, is kind of horrendous. So number three, the non-achiever. <laughs> Again, guys, companies are looking for experience people to employ at their job. Unfortunately, some of you guys have no experience. As a result, it shows. Guys, I'm not going to tell you to lie or to finesse or facilitate things you didn't do, but I'll tell you this. People that get jobs have experience. And you might have a degree. You might have a master's or a PhD. But guys, I know people that have a master's working at pet shops, working at freaking gas stations. The point is, without experience, you're worthless. Because they could train you, of course, but they want to train, train experienced people. So, the resume here, Christina Jacobs, of course, she is a woman. <laughs> no offense <gasps> to her. Female. But um, experience. Misogyny. Customer service, two places, right? But she's applying for an experienced customer service position as a manager. Guys, this is crazy because ultimately speaking, it's not bad, but it's not a lot of experience. And her actual tasks itself don't resonate with a manager position. So, guys, again, understand your uh, agenda here for the company. Do do values and goals align? Do they actually match the skill requirements? And as well, make sure you have experience to show you can back it up and actually be an asset to the company, a not liability. All right. So these are three bad examples here. You can see, um, you know, and then down below it says as well some more points. Good experience is bullets, um, and bad experience is um, you know some other points here. And then we could do some more for uh, bad examples, but we'll stop here. Of course, font is actually another one as well, guys. Font is key. If you're doing freaking random, like, small font uh, types, bro, they can't even read that shit. Like, if they can't read it, how do you even see what, what you're about? So having actual good font that's readable, large font goes a long way. All right. So now we're going to show good examples of resumes you can see as well. And in my I just want to make a quick touch up on mine real fast. Cool. Do you, do you mind reading the chat? Yeah. Until, like... So we're, we're going to show good ones here, and then we'll show, show mine's as well. All right? So, Bills, could you... Yeah, I got you. One second. Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, don't put it on. Oh, oh, hold on. No, no, no. no, no, no they, they can't see. They can't see. You want me to chats first? Chats first? Yeah, yeah. Chats first? Yeah, hit the chat. Okay, cool. Some more chats, and then we'll get into it as well. Um, Big Boss uh, Jasso says, a little off topic, but I wanted to, if I want to start a YouTube channel using you guys' content, is there anything specific I need to do to avoid copyright strikes? Think in advance. Um, no, but keep in mind, Rumble is our sponsor, and they're pretty much like managing us at this point. So, uh, Clear it with us first because you might get, uh, I want to say, copyrighted a little bit. So that may come into play. But hit us up, maybe Mo or somebody on Instagram behind the scenes. Um, what else we got here? Another, another one from Castle Club. Um, uh, Le uh, Leo. Uh, he said, what's good, FNF crew? Do we put our spe social media on private to prevent future employers from looking? What can we say on the screen? Uh, Cause they're working on something right now. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm put, no in my resume. I was I was just editing yeah. one more thing. Okay. And he had just. I got rid of the government databases that I know how to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're brave, man. Yeah. You're That's, brave. I, I had to get rid of that real quick. Okay. Um, What's well, the question? Keep bringing um, up oh. on the screen. You want to put it? The, the screen out. Which one was it? It was a uh, Castle Club. Yeah. Oh, Castle you'll, Club. You'll I got it. I'll put it, it up. Mark. Got it right now. All right. But yeah, I mean. Honestly, man, this is important because, again, resumes, man, if you, do, if you don't have a correct spelling, for example, bad font, pictures on your, on your stuff. Is, oh, look at this walked in, Chris. There you go. Welcome, Chris. Cool. Um, Anything else? You want to pull up my joint? Close yeah. this thing out? Be good. Uh, LEI goes, what's good, FNF crew? Do we put our social media on private to prevent future employers from looking? Good question, actually. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Private all your social media shit. And if you got anything crazy, get rid of it, bro. You know what's crazy too? The, all, I think some new crazy number came out like 80 or 90% of employers now scrub your social media. We know it's also vile as well. Let's say you get a job at a company, right? Mm -hmm. And you become cool with some of the employees there. They follow you on Instagram and they link it to HR. They're fucked oh, too. Oh, yeah. So you yeah, got to be bro. careful who you add on social yeah, media. Man. Period, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah man. They don't Hell play, man. man. Right. Yo, yo, party and get drunk. <laughs> That's bad. So here we go, guys. 100% transparency. Here is my resume that I use, guys, that got me hired by the Bureau. Um, right? Ended up not going full through with it all the way. But this is my resume, guys. Uh, right there. I'm doxing myself. Um, can we, can we go ahead and uh, control plus it real quick? Yes. Do you have a middle name? Yeah. Ah. Wait, what's your... 
He got wait. What's really? I didn't know he had a. What is it? Fuck you, niggas. Is it like Anthony or something? All right, so <laughs> <laughs> like Anthony. Um, so let, let's go through it real fast. All right, so you got a section, right? Go all the way to the top. So right, and th- guys, this is a this is a federal type uh, resume, right? So um, you got your name at the top, your address, phone number, email. Bam, done. Right. Then summary statement, right? Talk about college educated, what I used to do, et cetera. Because at this point, I had been on the job for about three years with um, with HSI, right? Um, and then education, professional skills, right? Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice from Northeastern University. And then employment, right? Mm. Then I go into personal, okay? Then I go into professional work experience. And then, bam, I start listing it out, right? So, special agent, uh, Homeland Security Investigation, Laredo, Texas, from September 2013 to present, right? And then you put your salary, uh, in this case, this is the government. I talked about my GS scale, um, job type, 50 hours per week minimum, full time, etc. And I put my, you put your supervisor's contact information there, which I blacked that out. And then I go into all the shit that I did, right? Had the most arrests for H. I. Laredo, uh, w- w- which is um, the office for the fiscal year 2016, etc. Uh, organized crime drug enforcement task force cases, OCDF, which is a very big, uh, w- you know, it's very difficult to get those, right? Um, Somebody said 50 words per minute. Hey, nigga, I'm not a, that fast. Of a, well, I'm faster now, actually, as a typer. Um, right? And then, you know, over 50 criminal arrests made as a lead case agent. Like, this is a really good resume, guys, from a law enforcement perspective. You high right? from it, man. Right? Uh, scroll down. Um, so you guys could see all the fucking shit I did. Right? And this is just when I was in Laredo. This doesn't even... I have an updated resume of all the shit I did in Florida. <laughs> but what, what are you showing? But A lot of experience. A lot of experience, bro. Yep. And then other work experience. Then I go into what I did when I was an intern. Right? I was in human trafficking group. Uh, oh, and then I was in an intelligence group. Uh, I was in a high-intensity drug trafficking group, uh, right? So uh, intel, human trafficking, then I was in a drug trafficking group, right? And I put the dates that I was in there, and I talked about what some of my duties were. I was in a national security group. And then before that, I was even loss prevention with Macy's, <laughs> right? Let's make a 950 per hour. God damn! I hey, remember man. that shit. <laughs> Bruh. Start somewhere, bro. Yeah. Start somewhere. You know, and I did that shit part-time. And then I got my education, certifications and achievements, training, training. right? Uh, when I went to the academy, right? Um, and then volunteer. any accolades that I have, and then volunteer work as well, right? So, guys, um, that is how you want your resume to be, where you basically have... Now, again, this resume is a little bit longer, and if your employer wants all that stuff, you can do it. Uh, normally, they want... Uh, one page. One page. If possible. But, you know, for granted, for the job position that I was going for, there's nothing wrong with having more, okay? Um, but that... But, again... Experience, your name and your address and your phone number at the top and your email so they can contact you. It's bold. It's right there at the top. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, you go into missions, your uh, summary statement, right? We go to that first page. Professional skills, education, employment, and then, bam, you start going into right into your work experience. And you start with the most recent first, guys, right? And they like to see that. 2013 to present, which means I'm currently still employed. Yeah. Okay? So. Um, That's huge. So, yeah. But yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was some gems here for you guys. I don't know yeah, anybody else that has the balls to actually show their resume. I, I get, you know what's funny? A lot of the YouTubers that talk shit about us, whatever, I'd love to see them bum-ass niggas put up their resume to mine. And that was my resume from 20 fucking 16. That's not even the, the shit that I did in Florida. I have an updated resume um, of all the shit that I did when I was in the Miami field office, which I didn't put on here because I figured, you know what, let me just give y'all the one that I... Um, that got me the job with the bureau. That's huge, though. You know what I mean? You Not got a dated resume, but yeah. So that one works. It worked. So, um, yeah. We were out here in these streets for real, guys. Literally. So fuck the haters. Um, Hybrid Muscle Project goes to add to my last comment. I tried to opening his eyes, and he went back and took her everything. Uh, I told her everything, told her everything, I, everything said. I said. Yep. yep. Now to, he downgraded me in his life, <laughs> and he doesn't come see me and the parents much anymore. Is there any way to save him? Any mention of her name, and he's mad. Bro, bro, we you, told you, bro. His actions just described what it is. You trying to help the situation made it worse. actually made him angry, and he added to telling his wife about you or sorry, his girl. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, because he knows deep down that he fucked up. To be honest with you. Wow. So, hey man, bros, bros before hoes, bro. Yeah, man, it is. Well, in this case, it's <laughs> hoes before bros. Yeah, and his bro literally chose the hoes before. Nigga his said, bro. Show, "Show me fresh resume." Nigga, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Though, bro, yo. By, by the way, if you want to see it, it's on it's on LinkedIn. Honestly, it's already there on LinkedIn, so it's kind of like there already. So, on LinkedIn.com. How'd they find you? By your name? Yeah, Walter Weeks. All right, pretty much. Yeah. Or search Dark Nigga. <laughs> You'll probably come up. Dark <laughs> Nigga. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. W stream. Yeah. A lot of value. A lot of sauce, man. Um, guys, again, ten things you can follow to get yourself a job anywhere you want to get. Again, most people 
don't prepare for job interviews and as a result they suck at one preparing and two getting an interview itself so yeah all right cool Guys, hope you guys um, uh, enjoyed that episode, man. I think that was a lot of value there. Timestamps are going to be up soon. We're going to be yep. back with some lovely ladies. And then IRL stream with Sneeko later on. Yep. Love you guys. Be back in a bit. Peace. Peace. Peace.